R.J. Barrett went from writing his dreams on a whiteboard to living them. And along the way, he set several NBA records and even made a few celebrity friends. But first, let's check out where R.J. got his athletic genes from. Number 7. R.J. Barrett's Early Life NBA players often complain about the grueling travel schedule, but R.J. had plenty of practice moving around from an early age. His parents, Rowan Barrett and Keisha Duhaney, both of Jamaican descent, spent a ton of time going from one place to the next when R.J. was young. When it comes to R.J.'s athleticism and genetics, he got more than he can bargain for. His mother was a collegiate athlete and ran track at St. John's where she met R.J.'s dad. She comes from an athletic family. Her parents ran track for the Jamaican national team. Her brother played football at Maryland, and her sister, Dahlia Duhaney, was a sprinter who competed for Jamaica at the Olympics in Barcelona in 1992. So while RJ's pops would become one of the most well-known Canadian basketball players, however, he was also a track athlete when he was younger. RJ's dad attended St. John's University in Queens, New York, where he played college basketball. After college, he didn't get drafted into the NBA and instead played overseas from 97 to 2008 in France, Spain, Greece, Israel, Argentina, and Venezuela. He also played for the Canadian national team and was its captain at the 2000 Summer Olympics. He now works as the general manager of the Canadian senior men's national team. When RJ was young, his parents moved often due to his dad's basketball career. They eventually settled in France for five years from 2003 to 2008. After his dad called it a career, they moved to Mississauga, Ontario. Barrett has a brother named Nathan, nicknamed Nate, who's around four years younger than him. His brother is just as competitive as the rest of the family. RJ's family never pressured him into playing basketball. In fact, they wanted him to play a multitude of sports and have a wide variety of options. But as the saying goes, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. From day one, RJ always loved basketball. Number 6. Basketball Obsession Growing up with a professional basketball player for a dad, RJ was always on the court shooting around, whether it be before his dad's games, after the game was done, or simply joining his dad for his practice course. What made things even easier was the fact that his dad's team had a second team for kids, so RJ was able to play with other kids while his father played professionally. He even wore the same uniform as his dad and the same number. When the family moved to Canada, RJ's mom convinced his dad to train him properly. The couple were hesitant at first because they didn't want to be those overbearing parents who were trying to live through their kids. But RJ's passion for ball was obvious, and who better to show him the ropes than his old man? Not to mention the fact that RJ's godfather was none other than Canadian basketball legend and NBA Hall of Famer Steve Nash. Nash and Barrett Sr. met each other when they played for Canada's under-19 squad and quickly became friends. Some of RJ's best basketball memories were when he was 10 or 11 and watching Nash play against the likes of Kobe Bryant, and then getting to talk to Uncle Steve right after and get all of the inside scoop about what the matchup was like and the ins and outs of the game. So it was clear that RJ had his mind made up to follow in his dad's footsteps. He even had a whiteboard where he wrote all of his goal lists. One such goal was to become the number one player in Canada by the time he was 13, and then be regarded top 10 in America by the time he turned 14. However, he went on to surpass even his wildest expectations, as by the time he turned 13, not only was he the best player in Canada, but was considered number one in the US as well. But this ranking did not come easy. He had to make a ton of sacrifices, including leaving his family behind to pursue his dreams. Number 5. Journey to the NBA When he decided to attend Montverde Academy, that meant RJ would have to leave behind his home in Ontario as well as his family. This was a difficult but necessary step. But things worked out just as a few months later he was collected the Jordan Brand Classic MVP and at the end of the year he was named to the Max Preps Freshman All-American First Team.
By the time he finished his career with Montverde, he was both the Naismith Prep Player of the Year and Gatorade National Player of the Year. This made him the first player since LeBron James to win the major awards and win a national title. So naturally, some of the best college programs came knocking at RJ's door. And among them, RJ decided to go play for the legendary college coach, Coach K, as a member of the Duke Blue Devils. RJ came out of the gates firing. He broke the Duke freshman scoring record in a debut by dropping 33 on their rivals, Kentucky. Then, at the end of Duke's regular season, Barrett was named a member of both the Sporting News All-American First Team, ACC All-Freshman Team, and the All-ACC First Team alongside his teammate, Zion Williamson. RJ was even named the USA Today's Player of the Year. So naturally, after establishing himself as one of the best young players in the world, he declared for the 2019 NBA Draft but his NBA career would not go as smoothly as his college experience. Number 4 NBA Career First and foremost, RJ was drafted by one of the toughest teams to play for, the New York Knicks. The Knicks picked RJ with their third overall pick, and right away, RJ was bombarded with high expectations. He was quickly dubbed the savior of the Knicks, who had been in the dumps ever since Carmelo Anthony left them. So not only did he have a ton of expectations, but he was also under the scrutiny of the Knicks media. Now that is a lot for a 19-year-old to handle. But still, RJ finished his rookie season averaging 14.3 points, 5 rebounds, 2.6 assists, and 1 steal in 30.4 minutes. However, he was left off of the NBA All-Rookie team after the season ended early due to COVID. Now, the following year, RJ showed improvements in his shooting, finishing the season shooting 40.1% from the three-point line and 74.6% from the free throw line. Shooting has always been an issue for RJ, but clearly he has done his best to improve his deficiencies. He had his best year in the 2021-2022 NBA season, where he set a franchise record becoming the youngest Nick to get consecutive games with at least 30 points at just 21 years old. He also became the 8th NBA player to tally 2,000 points, 500 rebounds, and 300 assists by 21 years old, joining Garnett, Kobe, T-Mac, LeBron, Melo, KD, and Luka. I mean, talk about elite company. RJ even set his career high of 46 points that year and became the youngest Knicks player to average 20 points per game for a season at 21 years old. However, despite showing improvements, the Knicks brass wanted to shore up their defense and bring in a better shooter. So in the 2023-2024 season, RJ found himself on a plane going back home to Canada after being traded to the Toronto Raptors. The Canadian fans welcomed RJ with open arms as they finally had a homegrown talent as the face of their team. Even though his time in New York did not go as planned, he did leave the Knicks after securing generational wealth. Number 3. NBA Contract So when you're as highly touted as RJ coming out of college, you start making the big bucks right away. His very first NBA deal was worth 4 years and $35 million. The Knicks even retained his services for a 1 year $9 million deal. But it was after that point that RJ really made generational wealth. He signed a 4 year deal worth $107 million. To make things even sweeter, every penny of that $107 million is guaranteed. So all the sacrifices he made as a kid definitely paid off. However, don't think RJ forgot his humble ways because he came into some money. No, far from it. When he isn't balling on the court, he makes sure that he is giving back to those in need. Number 2. Off the Court RJ has partnered with plenty of charities over the years. A big one he worked with was the Mississauga Food Bank. He donated $100,000 to the food bank, which provided for 200,000 meals as part of the community's fight against the coronavirus pandemic. Regarding the donations, RJ said, quote, One thing my family has taught me is the importance of being supportive when you can in any way you can. 
During these difficult times, we all need to do our part, and knowing I have the ability to help ensure people have what they need is important to me," Barrett said in a statement. I am happy I can make a difference in the neighborhood I grew up in. It's no wonder he has such a massive following online, as he genuinely seems to be one of the good guys. RJ has over 221,000 followers on Twitter, where he regularly gets shoutouts from celebrities like Ben Stiller, who was a big fan of his game in New York. While on Instagram, he has 1.1 million followers. Although his feed is primarily related to basketball, we wish he would show off his piano skills, as he is very proficient in it. RJ also used to write a monthly blog for USA Today and is fluent in French. Now that will come in handy now that he's back in Canada. His feed also has various sponsorships with ties into his overall net worth. Number one, his net worth. RJ has made plenty of bank playing in the NBA. His two big deals include a $35 million contract and a $107 million deal. Those two deals are good enough on their own to skyrocket his net worth. But along with the NBA deals, he has signed several lucrative deals with some of the biggest brands in the world. These include Puma, Uplay, American Express, Spotify, DoorDash, Google Pixel, Bertoli, and Booster Juice. Now the pressure to play for the Knicks is a lot, but hey, if you're good, all of that media exposure will help you get paid. And that is exactly what happened with RJ. Although we might not know the ins and outs of these deals, it is fair to assume that RJ's net worth is somewhere around the $40 million mark when you take into consideration taxes and all of that other boring stuff. On top of that, RJ is still young, so there will be plenty more checks in his future.